If you are new to our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Yeah, Melissa uh, Kahi is a backyard chicken keeper, beekeeper, and gardening who writes the award-winning blog Tilly's Nest. She lives in Cape Cod, Mass. with her family, and she contributes to a number of magazines. And it was, uh, her blogs won some awards. And she's, um, has some great books on how to speak chickens, why, what your chickens, why, why do you, your chickens do what they do and say what they say, and a kid's guide to chicken, or to keeping chickens. Welcome to the program, Melissa. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, I grew up on a farm and we had hogs and cattle, so I don't know a thing about chickens, so you're going to educate all of us on this deal. Uh, so, oh. so I want to, I want to start with if we can raise chickens, and based on if you're in Milwaukee or wherever you may be listing, you want to make sure the municipality that you're living in allows you to have the chickens. So if, if that, if that all checks out based on the number of chickens and no roosters and all that, what are two aspects of chicken keeping that most people overlook or not even consider? I think that um, one of the things that um, people overlook um, would be definitely that chickens don't require a lot of space. So even people who live in more uh, urban areas can keep chickens. So that's really a neat thing. The other thing that people don't realize is that chickens have personalities, just like dogs or cats. Well, then that's where that the pecking order comes from, isn't it? They know who's in charge and who's secondary and who who listens to who. Yeah, I mean, but I'm talking about personalities, like like um, like you and I have different personalities. Even though you know we have hierarchies at work and things like that, we still all have different personalities. Some of us are funny. Some of us are uh, more serious. Some of us are more dramatic. Um, so in addition to having that pecking order, um, you know, somebody's always got to be the boss and somebody's always got to be the little man or little little bird on the totem pole, so to speak. But, uh, but that's kind of um, where it all starts, really, um, from the day they're, they're just little chicks in the brooder. They, uh, they start figuring out who's who. Great. Um, so when starting your chicken journey for a newbie, is it best to start with chicks or with adult chickens? What, what's ideal? Well, I don't think that you can really go wrong. Um, certainly there are some benefits to getting older chickens. Uh, chickens start laying eggs when they're about 18 uh, weeks old to 20 weeks old. So if you want eggs right away, you might consider getting some older uh, chicks. The other thing you might want to think about um, is that sometimes they uh, don't require as much care as babies would in the beginning, chicks. But they grow really fast. But if you're interested in getting very tame chickens, chickens that become more like pets, uh, don't mind being handled or uh, interacted with um, and aren't skittish of you, then I would recommend starting out with chicks. But either way, getting people into chickens, you can't go wrong. Well, you said 18 to 20 weeks is when these chickens, if you get them from a chick, can, can begin laying eggs. How long can we expect and how many, like, I guess it's specific to breed, how much can we expect during the year or years before the egg is, or the chicken has pretty much gone through its laying egg cycle? Oh, that's a great question um, and one that uh, people should probably be aware of, so I'm super glad that you asked it. Um, so the chickens will start laying those eggs, like I said, 18 to 20 weeks of age, and they're most productive during their first two weeks, uh, two years, excuse me, um, of their lifetime. And then it starts to taper down. But I have chickens that are four years old um, that are still laying eggs quite regularly. And based on the breeds of the birds, you get different amounts of eggs. So some chickens will lay on average three eggs a week where some will lay five eggs a week and those are ways when you would want to research breeds like australorps are really strong egg layers white horn um leghorns are also breeds that lay about five eggs per week um and then there's some chickens that really don't lay too many eggs at all they're more decorative breeds like polish hens or silky bantams but they make great pets um but overall um you know, chickens live approximately five to seven years um, if they live out their natural lives. Uh, but mostly, um, when they lay, when they're about six years old, they completely stop. So that that then goes to the question: uh, after the chicken has done its egg laying cycle, what what happens? What do you do? What are your options? Um, well, for me, 
Steve, uh, there's a really only one option that I do, um, and that's keep a chicken nursing home. Okay. <laughs> um, because they uh, they become pets and they're they're friends uh, to my family and my other animals, uh, my dog and and um, you know the neighbors because uh, my chickens do like to wander around. Um, but certainly, uh, people are faced with uh, the choice of um, some people will sell them at two weeks of age. Um, and some people will actually uh, choose to harvest them and eat them. Um, but the meat is quite tough at that age. The birds that you're getting in the supermarket um, for consumption are approximately only six to eight weeks of age. Well, let's talk about the eggs here because we go to the grocery store, we see all white eggs. Now, when you go to the farmer's market, you can see a maj page of different color eggs, brown, light, yeah. gray, green. What? Why is that compared to the commercial? Why are we seeing different color eggs? Um, well, the different colored eggs are based on the different chicken breeds that you're keeping. Every different breed lays a different color egg. Um, and I think for many, many years, the grocery industry just assumed we wanted to see everything to be uniform, stay, same size, same shape, same color. Um, and I think we're moving away from that trend uh, more so with farmers markets. And a lot of the local grocers uh, where I live are now starting to carry um, different colored eggs, uh, and some people are even paying quite a premium price, even though there's no difference uh, as to what is in the egg um, based on the color. The, the nutritional value of the egg is based on the chicken's diet. Great. Um, so basically, how much space does one chicken need? So kind of how, how do you decide? I know like in the city of Milwaukee, you can only have so many chickens, um, but say you have a larger yard, like is it uh-huh. four square feet or what, like what, what's ideal? Yeah, so, you know, Wisconsin is a place that has weather and gets snow, so I always think that it's important that you build a chicken coop, that's the house portion, um, where the chickens will hang out in uh, bad weather or cold weather. Um, you know, they need about approximately four square feet in that coop for each bird. Um, so keeping that in mind, there's an outside portion of the chicken area called the run, and that is where it's a fenced-in area, sometimes covered, uh, sometimes uh, most people will put hardware cloth on it. It's much safer than the chicken wire, but that spacing, uh, the bigger the better per bird, and uh, overall chickens need approximately 10 square feet per chicken. And then if we want to have, if we're going to get chickens, we need to have at least two, right? Because they get lonely, they get, they actually do get depressed and the egg production does fall off. Is this correct? Yes, you're 100% right. So I always tell people a good number of chickens to start with is four to six, uh, for a family. You'll get about two dozen eggs, uh, per week. Now, let, let's talk about the finance aspect of this. How, sure. Like, obviously, it depends on the chicken, the, the feed, the cost, but how much are we looking at per chicken per year? Uh, obviously, you're going to have to wait a little time to get the investment back that you put in with the chicken coop and the, the feed and all this, but what, yeah. what can we expect on investment? Well, you know, baby chicks are not that expensive. Um, once you get them immunized and everything else, if you get them at a feed store or whatnot, you know, under a chicken, you can you can order them online as well. So you're looking at um, anywhere from two dollars a chick to seven or eight dollars a chick. Um, and then the feed uh, comes in all different size bags. But I have. Um, 12 uh, chickens right now, and I go through uh, like 35 pounds of feed a month, um, and that's uh, that, that feed bag is organic, so the organic is a little bit more expensive, but you can usually get a 50-pound bag of feed for about $20. Okay. Um, so it's not really that expensive when you think about it. I don't know how much you're paying for a dozen eggs there, but in Massachusetts, it's around, you know, four to five. Four to seven dollars a dozen for, for the organic eggs. Uh, for the organic eggs. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here it's about um, it's about three dollars. Sorry, I'm sorry. No. Sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> how much do you guys? What were you saying? It's about three dollars a dozen for organic mm-hmm. eggs. Depending, kind of depend. Three to four dollars. So yeah, yeah, the colorful ones get the the, the seven dollars, <laughs> um, and they tend to come out around uh, holidays. Uh, but mostly getting back to um, what we were talking about, um, 
you know, the most expensive thing uh, that you're going to have to be faced with is making the chicken coop Mm -hmm. um, and the run. That's the most expensive part. But once that's done, and there are so many fabulous chicken coops that are made from upcycling or just uh, creating something really from nothing, old pallets, um, scrap materials that you find um, from other projects or salvaging things. So... You know, the sky's the limit with what you can uh, create. And then uh, for those people who aren't really handy, there's prefabricated, pre-made coops um, out there that are for sale online or local feed stores. Or I think even the local, uh, like the big warehouse stores are starting to carry chicken coops. Great. Now, where can people find your books and what is something we may find surprising in your newest book on, on how to speak chicken, why your chickens do what they do and say what they say without, you know, giving too much away? Oh, sure. Um, well, thank you so much. Um, well, people can come and find me at tillysnest.com and I have signed books there and the books are available on- online and a lot of your um, favorite bookstores. Uh, and then... Um, Something surprising from the latest book. Uh, I think people are surprised mostly that you can fall in love with chickens, um, and fall in love with keeping them, and uh, and really they they do find a place in your heart. Well, Melissa, we greatly appreciate you coming on the program, sharing your knowledge with all of us about how we can keep chickens in an urban setting and what we need to know as beginners uh, in this procedure. Uh, Well, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for checking out the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. For more, go to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com for full length in-studio video and podcast replay of Season 1. Season 2 underway and added weekly. Tweet us at TWVG Show or hashtag TWVG to be part of the program.